Okay, so new challenge. Um, Doris gave me this idea. Basically, I saw her travels to Memphis and along the way she pulled out a map of all the state parks in Tennessee and she was kind of crossing them off as she visited them. Um, yes, sign me up for that challenge. So there are 620 state parks in Michigan and what I would love to do is visit and read in as many of them as I can. However, this is definitely going to be a long challenge and not just like one summer sort of a thing. So stay tuned because this will be going on for quite some time. Hey everyone, back from vacation and I just wanted to talk about the two books that I read kind of actually before I was on vacation and then a little bit after I was on vacation. I didn't do a lot of reading during the vacation just because I was with my mom and so we were busy chatting, that's pretty much all. Anyway, um, the first book that I finished literally right before we left for vacation is by Richard Radde and it's Don't Make Me Pull Over, An Informal History of the Family Road Trip. And um, I really found this book so, so interesting. I will say that it was definitely like a very um, American book. There was reference to other countries and I don't think enough emphasis was put on basically how we stole ideas from all the other countries and how our road system is subpar. But anyway, so um, this is basically on how lots of families go on road trips during the summer and it's just kind of something that is I don't know, just something that you do. I mean, there's such a wide range of um, like places to see in America and different landscapes and things like that. Um, so a lot of people will just go travel. It's pretty inexpensive to go on a road trip as opposed to flying an airplane all the time. And um, so that was kind of one of the main points about why it is so popular is because um, although gas prices are super expensive right now, to put a whole family in a car and drive somewhere is not as expensive as getting an airplane, an airplane ticket for every single member of your family. Um, one thing that was super interesting to me is basically that the expressways by my house, um, highways, interstates, whatever you want to call them, um, they're they're just there. They're just part of life. And basically they aren't even that old. Um, it said like Stonehenge, the pyramids of Giza and Mick Jagger, the U S interstate highway system is one of those marvels that seems to have been around forever. The reality is quite the contrary. In fact, a short list of the notable items that have been around longer than our first interstate includes electronic computers, the Burger King Whopper, optic fiber, videotape recorders, wireless TV, remote controls, microwave ovens, Disneyland, nuclear submarines, diet soft drinks, Ritalin, credit cards, the Chevy Corvette, um, NBA, NBC's Today Show, ultrasound, color TV, the reign of Queen Elizabeth II, Playboy magazine, marshmallow peeps, and actor singer slash lifeguard David Hasselhoff. Every, even police radar guns have been around longer than our interstate system, which goes to show the odds have been stacked against drivers from the very beginning. Now, things are not the same in the um, in Europe. They have had amazing roads for such a long time, or at least, I guess I, I haven't been there recently. I don't know what their roads are like, but basically we wanted a system that looked like what they had in Europe. And I also know the cool thing for me about Europe is like, I feel like all of the Europeans that um, are on booktube, like you can easily get on a train and go to another country and it's, it's pretty close. It doesn't really, it's not really that far away. Um, I mean, if you're are on part of the like main land portion of Europe, I feel like it would be super easy to go from place to place. And I just think that is so amazing how much travel you could do and just like your country as a jumping off place for all these other countries i think is super cool um but anyway it talks about like how the numbering system was developed in our expressways and all sorts of other things um why there's always construction because roads only last for 20 to 30 years um and just like tons of other random information about the history of road trips about roads about 
the construction of roads, all sorts of interesting things you didn't know that you wanted to know. Um, but I felt like it was kind of like exciting to read before actually going on a road trip. So that was that one. The other one was a book that I found in this bookstore I went to when I was on vacation. And again, it was one I came across that I didn't know I wanted to read because I had never heard of it. And I thought it was so, so good. So um, the title of the book is... Oh, my iPad just died. <laughs> it's basically, I was going to look at notes on my iPad so that I could tell you about it in more depth, but I will just give you a brief overview. It's basically, I'll put it somewhere, um, like everything you wanted to know about Indians, but didn't want to ask or something like that. Correct title will be here. Um, and it is, um, own voices written by an Indian and, um, I felt like it was just a really, he had a really good re approach on how to discuss this, um, these issues with white people. Basically, um, the beginning of the book, <laughs> sorry, my cats are like mad at each other because they've been away for so long. Well, only like four or five days, but I feel like they're reestablishing like who's boss. Anyway, um, the beginning of the book, there was a lot of time spent just establishing the tone and basically on how like we need to have these discussions and we need to be able to have relationships with people, whether it's through a book or um, just face to face, like actual uh, friendships and connections where we can talk about difficult things and where it's okay to ask questions and um, it's okay to make mistakes. And it's just like, um, not that it's okay to make mistakes, but that there's just this growth mindset and nurturing relationship where you're able to discuss things and it's okay to discuss them and to learn and grow together. Um, so um, he talked a lot about Indian terminology and like what do people prefer, Indian, Native American, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, it tends to seem that they mostly prefer the word Indian and basically um, his perspective and again he's he's very clear on this he's one Indian out of so many different cultures and different groups of Indians um, but basically his thing is basically that white people called them Indians <laughs> it was inaccurate they weren't from India they weren't in India and um there's just all this prejudice associated with that term and so basically um a lot of people like him have kind of risen up and reclaimed indian as uh the term and taken power back basically and so mostly that's what is preferred is indian or like where they're actually um associated with like ojibwe or whatever um so i found that super interesting and kind of familiar from um other things that I've heard from other groups of people as well um what else did he say he really emphasized how um Indians are grouped all together and it was not like they were one culture at all um there were so many different groups of people and even like all like Ojibwe or all whatever they were even different from the smaller groups within them and the words like tribes and all that sort of other language that people use to talk about Indians those are all terms that white people have placed on Indians um and with that being said there's also a lot of terms that we have stolen like if you look for example in Michigan there are so many like Indian names for cities and stuff like that. That's why if you go to the UP and you mention places in books or whatever, no one can pronounce them because um, they're not, uh, they're Indian terms basically, but they were stolen from the Indians and are often like mispronounced because it was basically like a white person taking what they thought this one word was and applying it to a city or to some other name of something. Um, so the pronunciation is often wrong. The spelling is often wrong. And also like the word meaning is sometimes misunderstood. So that part was really interesting to read about. And um, then it just kind of went into typical Indian life and like, 
um, there's this perception of what Indians were like in the past. And um, I think there's this, high, this idea that they should almost have kind of like an Amish like lifestyle, like the Amish have kind of said, like, we don't want certain modern technologies and they have kind of stayed in the past. And there's this idea that Indians should do the same. And, um, hello, <laughs> like we don't live like white people don't live like pioneers for the most part, although off grid sort of stuff is, um, really becoming popular. But like, why do you expect Indians to like live in a teepee or a wigwam or like, I don't know, <laughs> um, he also talked a lot about getting money from the casinos, about taxes, about schooling, all sorts of super, super, super interesting stuff. I would highly recommend this book. I found it fascinating. And yeah, those are the two books I got to. I'm hoping to read a book a day now that I'm on vacation, although I am working a lot, a lot of hours. So we will see if that happens. And I also think sometimes you just get sucked up into daily life. Like, you're just busy doing stuff around the house and then you look at the clock and like right now it's almost like five o'clock. How did that even happen? Anyway. Um, yeah, so those are the two books I read so far and read on vacation last week. I will check in with you guys soon, but I'm really curious to hear like what books have you read so far this summer that you are loving? I will talk to you soon. Bye.